I wish I could have soft and glowing skin. New Geisha Black Soap. With activated charcoal to give you soft and glowing skin. New Geisha Black Soap and New Geisha Moringa. Close up deep action. With antibacterial formula and deep cleaning gel. Keeps your teeth clean and protected. Close up deep action. Enjoy long-lasting fresh breath and more. Disinfect and protect your home with JIC. JIC kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing germs. Disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces and wash white clothes, towels and dishcloths with JIC bleach. Just JIC it. The peace of mind about the insurance is that uh, if you go down, the insurance will bring you back to where you are. You will sleep comfortably. My name is R. Wilson Dritomatu. I am a businessman in Karatina town. We took policies so as to cover the assets, to cover motor vehicles, to cover fire, etc. etc. And our coverage, we have about over 20 policies with the UAP. For medical cover, especially me and my wife, because the other insurances refuse to take 700 above. But with the UAP, we found a shoulder to lean on. Congratulations to UAP and World Musho for having partnered with the business community. This is NTV. to you. It is Monday the 11th of January 2021. Thanks very much for making time for us on NTV. It's been a busy day in the newsroom. These are some of the stories we've been following up for you. A time has come for me to say goodbye. David Maraga stripped of his official robe as he transitions into retirement. If you waver and do the wrong thing and this country descends into chaos, God will never forgive you. DCJ Mwilu now takes the reins of the judiciary as acting Chief Justice. I shall ensure uh, that we further entrench and build on your legacy. Also tonight, Lawrence Warunge and his girlfriend Sarah Mudhoni remanded for 14 days as autopsy of murdered kin is conducted. Chances are very high it was one attacker, but if you are more than one, probably the weapon use was similar. Detectives continue piecing together details of how a son slaughtered his family. Plus, a school in Capedo is evacuated following a banditry attack that left one person dead. And there is some merit in that idea. Why? It guarantees at the very basic minimum that BBI will pass. Senate Majority Whip Irungu Kangata says a multiple choice referendum is the only way to push for constitutional change in the Mount Kenya region. NTV Tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. 
It is nine o'clock and David Agondoa joins us in sign language interpretation tonight. Let's take you to our top story now and David Maraga's reign as Chief Justice finally came to a close as he bowed out, handing over the instruments of power to his deputy Philomena Mwilu. Maraga will be remembered for his historic nullification of the 2017 presidential election results and for speaking his mind, especially regarding the executive, whom he claimed failed to respect the judiciary and its independence. Zainab Ismail with details of Maraga's last moments as Chief Justice. At exactly 10 a.m., retired Chief Justice David Kenani Maraga presided over his last special court session held inside the Supreme Court chambers where, according to tradition, the LSK president gave submissions before the highest court in the land to have the judge officially retire. My plea to the court that it is just and lawful that an order be made that the Honorable Mr. Justice David Kenani Maraga shall be deemed as having retired from the office of judge, chief justice, and president of the Supreme Court of Kenya at midnight, 11th January 2021, upon attaining the age of 70 years. Uh, application by Nelson Harvey, the president of the Law Society of Kenya, succeeds in its entirety and the same is granted as prayed. Justice Maraga, the Supreme Court judges and other judiciary staff then proceeded to an elaborate official Show handing over ceremony uh, outside the court. The Chief Justice held by the Maraga handed over to Those his deputy are... CJ Philomena Mwilu, who now takes over as acting Chief Justice. The constitution, the institutional the flag Justice. and a status report on the judiciary. I'm sure you live in this country and you have seen the drums of political war being beaten already. My colleagues, if you waver and this country descends into chaos, God will never forgive you. I shall ensure uh, that we further entrench and build on your legacy and that the judiciary shall forge ahead and continue its journey of transformation. Maraga has had a difficult tenure with the executive arm of government openly challenging his decisions and those of the Supreme Court. On numerous occasions, he accused the executive of underfunding the judiciary, describing it as contemptuous treatment of the third arm of government. A time has come for me to say goodbye. This is the third transition we are having since... At exactly 11 a.m., he was stripped of his official robe and white wig, symbolic of the transition into retirement, and that now he is a civilian. He handed over the government stores to Chief Registrar of Judiciary, Anne Amade, which included an official car, national flag, and number plate CJ1 to symbolize official handover of power. The Judicial Service Commission will now begin the search for a new Chief Justice. The Constitution clearly stating that the President shall appoint a new Chief Justice as recommended by the Judicial Service Commission and subject to the approval by the National Assembly, setting out criteria for the entire process. As Philomena Mwilu takes over as Chief Justice in acting capacity before a new office holder is appointed within six months, the race to succeed David Kenani Maraga is intensifying with big names within the legal fraternity being touted as possible candidates. Zainabi Smile, NTV. Well, David Maraga is a man who climbed the ranks in his profession. Let's take a quick look at where it all began. Now, uh, Maraga studied law in the 70s here in Nairobi, and it was in October 2003 that he was then appointed as a high court judge by then President Mwai Kibaki. He was the presiding judge of the family division of the high court in Nairobi and a resident judge at the high court in Nakuru. 
Now, in 2012, he was then elevated to a Court of Appeal judge and served as a presiding judge of the Court of Appeal in Kisumu. In October of 2016, Maraga was officially appointed as the Chief Justice of Kenya by President Kenyatta. Now, this was after he was nominated by the Judicial Service Commission and approved by the National Assembly. Maraga took uh, over after the early voluntary retirement of Dr. Willie Mutunga. His career was, of course, punctuated with a bit of controversy at times, the most memorable being the moment he annulled the August 2017 presidential election. Three years later, Maraga shocked the nation again by advising President Uhuru Kenyatta to dissolve parliament for failing to reach the two-thirds gender rule over and over. And today, January 11th, David Maraga handed over power and authority as he officially resigned, uh, beg your pardon, as he officially uh, gave up his tenure as uh, Chief Justice of um, the uh, Supreme Court of uh, Kenya. Well, in his uh, last media interview, the former Chief Justice said that he is indeed proud of what he has achieved as head of the third arm of government. Maraga also said his conscience was clear on all cases he had adjudicated in close to 20 years of public service including annulling of the 2017 presidential election. He sat down with our editor, planning and research, Edmund Nyabola, in August last year. And he began by urging Kenyans to embrace the spirit of constitutionalism. We, we must be, as a people, be mindful of, of what the lawyers call constitutionalism. Constitutionalism is when a constitution is implemented in such a way that it achieves the aspirations eh, and the values of the society. There are a couple of occasions when the rule of law has really been tested in this country. Yes. And one of them was the 2017 election when the court, the Supreme Court, led by you, issued a ruling that annulled the presidential election. How do you think we performed when it comes to the rule of law from that experience alone? The majority of the Supreme Court were very clear in their minds. We don't want to return our country to the 207, 208 experience. So we must follow the law. So we, we, we were firm on that. And uh, when we found that the election had not been held properly in accordance with the Constitution, you know, there was that claim that, look, uh, you have not even counted the votes. The, the president uh, got the majority votes and says, we said, fine, he may have gotten that. But the means to the end is as important as the end itself. Do you still stand by the six of you who made that decision and led by you? Do you still stand by the decision that you made to this day, three years later nearly? I stand uh, by that the, the, the decision. You bring it b even ten years after now, I will still, on the evidence that was given before us, I will still come to the same conclusion. What is your relationship, personal relationship, with the president as a result of that? I have no problem with the president as a person, and even even in the in the, in the other issues that we have, we appear not to be reading from the same page. I have no problem with the president as a person. I have a problem with the exercise of the of the of the powers that uh, that Vest, are there. vested in him. Do you think this country is governed by the rule of law? The country is governed by the rule of law. A majority of the Kenyans obey the law. Obey the law. It is only a few government officials. Who, who are disobeying the, the rule of law, and, uh, and uh, some, some people have taken the cue from that. Eh? And sometimes they come to court, they want to take the court in circles. They don't want to, when there's a judgment against them, they want to come with all manner of applications because they don't want to, to obey, because they have seen what, uh, what the government is doing. The 2010 constitution came up with laws and institutions that were responsible for the fight against graft. Yet, uh, several years later, the judiciary again is being blamed for the sluggish pace with which we are prosecuting some of these cases. How do you respond to that? Some, some people have said that the judiciary is the weak link. Mm -hmm. Weak link in the, in, in the just chain. The judiciary doesn't go getting cases from out there to come and hear them. The cases are brought by the police and then they are prosecuted by the DPP. The, the judiciary will go by the evidence. That's what, what the rule of law is all about. If you bring a strong case, 
there would be a conviction. If you don't bring a strong case and the evidence is, 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 is tampered with the, at, at the, 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 the stage of investigation, the courts will throw away those cases. But what do you say about those quote-unquote bad apples that you are talking about? Because they are the ones, the judges who are you know, uh, issuing orders that are neither here nor there, that are actually spoiling the good image of the judiciary. Uh, uh, Mr. Nyabola, yes. think back and see of the three arms of government, the one which has pressed its people uh, very hard is the judiciary. We, we dismiss a number of magistrates. We have taken judges through uh, what? Uh, cases and some of them have gone to the tribunals. We, have, we hold our people to account. Would you say that you've left the judiciary a much better institution than you found it? I would say that I have uh, done my best. And I, as, as I said, I leave behind a judiciary which is very strong. We have done uh, one, uh, wonderful work uh, and, and, and we, we, we are moving on and, and I leave behind a, a judiciary which is uh, very, very uh, strong. Edmund Nyabola, NTV's uh, planning and research editor, speaking there last uh, year to uh, David Maraga, and we certainly do wish him all the very best. Elsewhere now and to other stories making headlines today, graphic details have emerged about the final moments of the five victims that were executed in Kagongo village in Kiambu County. Autopsies on the five were conducted today and the results show that all five victims died from similar injuries as they were murdered by Lawrence Warunge, the first born in the family. Gina Kirori has those details. The fight that Nicholas Warunge, Anwan Jiko, Christian Jenga, Maxwell Jenga and James Kinyanjui put up for their lives is one that was fought to the very end. Lawrence's mother, Anwan Jiko, broke her arms trying to shield herself from her own son, while James Kinyanjui, who was living within the family's compound, also had defensive wounds. We did go view the body when it was tri uh, taken to Gashie, the mortuary. It was in a very, very, very bad shape, very, very, very bad shape, badly mutilated. But Lawrence's little brother, 13-year-old Christian Jenga, and his father, Nicholas Warunge, bore the brunt of the injuries. There were mainly stab wounds, which are multiple, uh, on the chest. Some of them had slash uh, wounds on the, on the neck. And there were a lot of uh, multiple blunt trauma to the head. While Lawrence Warunge claims that he was alone at the time of the gruesome murder, the injuries consistent with the five victims found in the compound of the Warunge home are yet to determine whether he acted alone or whether someone else was in the family's home during the time of the vile murder. It's like uh, it was someone who was doing it with a lot of uh, anger or uh, yes, yes. Around the same time that post-mortem examinations were being carried out on his own family, Lawrence Warunge sat at the Kiambu Law Courts alongside his girlfriend Sarah Mudoni. The two who are the lead suspects in the murders will be detained at Gigiri Police Station for the next 14 days. That if the suspects are released, their lives may be in danger due to the gravity of the offence. The family of the late James Kinyanjui, who lived within Warunge's compound, says that on the day of the murder, he had gone to his original home where he had rent arrears and asked his landlord if he could move back in as he pays his debt. But the landlord referred him back to the Warunge home. He will be laid to rest on Wednesday. He is known. He's not just a liberal. He has a name. He is Kinyanjui Wamba, a person that we loved, a person that has taken care of the family despite him being low. Sources close to the Warunge family add that Anwan Jiko tried to seek counselling services for her son in the months leading up to the murder as she had noticed a behavioural change in her son. The four members of the Warunge family will be laid to rest this Saturday. Gena Kirari, NTV. A story that we certainly will be keeping uh, close eyes on. All right, let's take you to Baringo County now. And a school in Capedo has been evacuated due to the growing level of insecurity experienced in the region. This comes after one person was shot dead by bandits along the volatile Turkana and Baringo border. 
Students from the Capedo Mixed Secondary School were relocated to a village under tight security. Following the attack, Kevin Mutai reports on the details of that story and the general outlook of the schools one week after reopening. This video captured by a local in Capedo, Baringo County, shows the panicked students of Capedo Mixed Secondary School alighting from a police truck. Police relocated them to safety following an attack by bandits who stormed into a nearby village and started spraying bullets. According to locals, the bandits claimed they were looking for stolen livestock. One person was shot and killed during the attack. It has been only one week since schools reopened across the country. And here, banditry is threatening the safety of the learners. Some communities living in the region have been involved in conflicts precipitated by cattle raids and dispute over herding grounds, which has kept hundreds of kids out of school. Security has been beefed up in the area with officers from the Rapid Deployment Unit and the General Service Unit deployed to flush out the bandits and quell the tension. Meanwhile, top government officials have been traversing the country Assessing the progress of learners in schools, Interior CS Fred Batiangi, who was in Kiricho County, directed local administration officers to crack the whip on all the perpetrators involved in teenage pregnancies. Uh, Kiricho has done very well. The return to school here has been very successful. This is one of the counties that crossed the 90% mark a long time ago. And um, there are about 91 girls uh, who uh, are are expecting and we have agreed the government policies that we get our children back to school all of them including those who who are expecting pregnancy is not a disease in the coast region a team of pss in taita taveta county noted with concern that there's need for an upgrade of schools infrastructure especially in boarding schools where it is a nightmare for teachers to implement covid 19 safety guidelines <laughs> Most learners across the country have reported back to school, except in areas facing cases of insecurity and natural calamities such as floods. Kevin Mutai, NTV, in Mombasa. It's just gone past a quarter past the hour. Time for a quick break on NTV tonight. More when we return. Stay with us. Disinfect and protect your home with Jek. Jek kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing germs. Disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces and wash white clothes, towels and dishcloths with Jek bleach. Just Jek it. I have good taste and only go for things. Things that are real. Only Manji make the real digestive biscuits. Real crunchy, real tasty, and the real source of high fiber. Manji digestive biscuits. The real thing. Welcome to our new office. Wonderful sight. <laughs> Just imagine. One, two, three, four. Ha. This is where the parking is. And then the warehouse front door. Here. The reception. Here and the fridges here. The lorry's entrance there and their exit there. One way only. What is it? So where is the building? Fast, stress-free construction. Get your factory-made buildings in 10 weeks with Southbuild. Order yours now. Southbuild, a quality building solution from MRM. Disinfect and protect your home with Jek. Jek kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing germs. Disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces and wash white clothes, towels and dishcloths with Jek bleach. Just Jek it. I want you to tell Matthias that he should marry my Roberta. And how can I tell him that? Well, I think Renata is a very nice woman. I'm not jealous. You're jealous of Agustin? Who did I marry? It's you, Geronimo. Our society is very cruel about these kinds of things. And I don't want my daughter to be the talk of the and town. And I don't care about what society thinks. That does not matter to me. But it matters to me. 
relax, relax. I know right. you're here. Come it's on, over. Karina. That's right, she's here, and she's going to stay Lazarus, here. Please, calm down. Timeless love. Select a plot of value-added land within Garden of Joy Gated Community of Koma Kennel Road, Machakos. Now Kwamue January na 21K with Optiven. Call us now on 0790-300-300. Welcome back. Senate Majority Whip Irungu Kangata now says having a multiple choice referendum is the only way to salvage the push for a constitutional change in the Mount Kenya region. Speaking publicly for the first time since he authored a letter to President Kenyatta indicating the dangers the BBI faced in his backyard, Kangata stood by his word insisting there was a systematic political problem in the region that needed to be attended to. NTV senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Morevi attended the press conference and has the details. At the Senate compound, he knew he had a weighty message. Pressure has been mounting on him to come out and clarify what his letter to the president was all about. To Kangata, it was not so much about the letter, rather who would be bold enough to tell the king he was naked. We came to a realization that uh, it is something that has been boiling in that region, the Mount Kenya region, but people are somehow fearful to say it, to publicly bring that issue before uh, the public, or, or rather to inform the government that there's a problem, a very deep-rooted problem of BBI ratings in our region. Kangata stands by his findings, which indicated only two out of ten people in the Mount Kenya region will vote for the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020, noting it will be detrimental to ignore the voice of the ground. He says beyond conducting the research, he called people to his home to farm it up. I ensured that group comprised of uh, various stakeholders in our county, that is uh, teachers, lawyers, farmers, whether coffee farmers, tea farmers, milk farmers, avocado farmers, Buddha Buddha sectors, the church. Though Kangata now says his research was mostly done in Moranga County, he spoke to other leaders in Mount Kenya, who he claims read from the same script. I did what is called triangulation. I talked with other members of parliament, and I wanted to see whether the findings that are found in Moranga County, do they mirror the general sentiment in Mount Kenya? And indeed, I did a farm that uh, what I found out in our region appears to echo uh, rather in the entire Mount Kenya region. The Senate Majority Whip, who says he is not afraid of being punished by the Jubilee Party, also notes the political situation in the mountain was so dire and needed direction so from the president. Start, eh? The truth is there is a, a systemic problem, a political problem that needs some intervention in our county, uh, Moranga, and also in the larger Mount Kenya region. According to Kangata, most of the respondents in his research want a unified push among the political class for the BBI without sidelining the deputy president. He also now holds the position akin to that of the deputy president and his Tanga Tanga Brigade, that a multiple choice referendum was the only way to salvage what he says are good proposals in the document. Notwithstanding the proponents of that idea, there is some merit in that idea. Why? It guarantees at the very basic minimum that BBI will pass. Because it's the whole idea of giving an array of options to Kenyans. The only remorse for Senator Kangata is the fact that the letter leaked, but it stands by its contents. This even as those in President Uhuru Kenyatta's corner now accuse him of trying to lay ground for moving to Tanga Tanga. Kennedy Muraidi, NTV in Nairobi County. From the politics, let's shift focus to the latest COVID-19 numbers now. 63 people have tested positive for the virus from a sample size of 2,134. This now brings the total number of positive cases in the country to 98,334. Out of the 63 cases, 57 are Kenyans and 6 are foreigners, 37 are male and 26 are female. 
Nairobi County still records the highest number of new infections at 43, uh, followed by Kakamega with three, Makweni uh, three, Kilifi three, and Busia two. 226 patients have recovered from the virus, and that brings the total number of recoveries to 81,101. Meanwhile, though, three more people have succumbed, bringing the cumulative number of deaths to 1,713. Now, uh, Kenya is now able to free up resources amounting to 32.9 billion shillings earlier earmarked for expenditure in debt servicing obligations in the current financial year following approval by the Paris Club for the country's participation in the debt service suspension initiative. This debt relief measure, which Kenya had earlier rejected, is meant to create some breathing space for the government. It is now the fourth time in the history of Kenya that the country has reached out to the Paris Club for debt relief with the previous instances having been in 1994, the year 2000 and 2004. The Paris Club comprises of Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Russia, Sweden, Switzerland and the United Kingdom. In the current financial year alone, the Kenyan taxpayer was set to shoulder at least 28.4 billion shillings in debt redemption and 5.2 billion shillings in interest service to these countries. <laughs> Kenya's approach to the Paris Club marked a U-turn in stance with Treasury Secretary Ukuriatani having earlier rejected plans for such an undertaking. For our own situation, we, um, we are not very certain yet whether we are going to go for it. Because the company conditions are a bit tough. When the G20, the group of developed countries, succeeded in pledging resources under the Debt Service Suspension Initiative, the DSSI, Kenya was one of the first countries to say we are not going on board because it will lower our credit rating among our commercial lenders. Kenya will now benefit from suspension of debt service obligation to the Paris Club for six months ending June 30th, 2021. But with China, Kenya's largest creditor not part of the Paris Club, the taxpayer is not yet out of the woods as far as the high debt servicing burden is concerned. In the current financial year alone, interest to the Exim Bank of China and the China Development Bank account for 21% of the 154 billion shillings bill on interest payment for external debt. Julian Amboko, NTV. Now, the Nairobi County Assembly leadership under the acting speaker, Jeffrey Majiwa, has scoffed at remarks made by Deputy President William Ruto's allies on the nomination and vetting process for the Nairobi gubernatorial by-election, terming the remarks reckless and divisive. The acting speaker said the Assembly will not be intimidated and that all processes will be open and transparent. That I take this opportunity to respond to the reckless statements made by senior legislatures in this country, which was only meant to incite members of public against the county assembly and its constitutional mandate. The deputy president and his team ought to have known better than any one of us that the county assemblies are independent and do not take instructions from political rallies. Most of, the, most of them who are addressing the county assembly in the streets of Nairobi belong to outside counties. Their, therefore, their, advice, their, advices, their advices are needed in their own countries back at home. It is 9.30, time for another quick break. I'll be back in just a moment with the day's business news. Fun and food go together beautifully at GMC Place. Enjoy our succulent meals in a serene setting with a varied choice of fun games for the little ones. Cup it up with a cuppa or a cocktail, all available to your taste. Discover the joy of a warm pool by diving into the Blue Oasis heated pool or at GMC Place, the fun never ends. Make your reservation today on 0701-560-560. Go Ahead is believing to make each day a brighter day. 
it is our faith to start all over again. Go ahead is never giving up in the face of adversity. To go ahead, now that is the Cajun spirit. That's when she replied, Give me one good reason to stay with you. Nikam to me a hundred reasons to be my boo. Akanisho unabonga sana kwa text lakini in real life when I'm timid. Apo apo nika get minutes ya ku paint picture vivi. Akasema ati I'm in demand. Unadani DM yangu ni M. P. Kumbe nilikuwa nisha sotiwa na a hundred M. Call, SMS, and browse from only 10 shillings with Telcom. Now that's power. Telcom, moving with you. Welcome back to the business news now. And the Kenya Revenue Authority's voluntary tax disclosure program is now in effect and, according to a tax expert, has the potential of significantly widening the tax base, a challenge which is currently magnified due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Alex Mwangi reports. Taxpayers will now get full or partial relief of penalties and interest on undisclosed taxes for the last five years. This will be effected through the newly introduced Voluntary Tax Disclosure Program, which is aimed at enhancing tax compliance through disclosure of unpaid taxes. The last open tax amnesty we had in this country was in 2003-2004. That's uh, during Honorable Mwiraria's uh, tenure as finance minister then. And what, what, what that showed was that um, there were quite a number of people who were not paying taxes and given the opportunity to self-declare and get a waiver of the penalties and interest, they did declare. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the years that Revenue Authority performed very well in terms of revenue collections. The Voluntary Tax Disclosure Program was introduced through the Finance Act 2020. It commenced on the 1st of January this year. It shall run for three years and lapse on 31st December 2023. The program seeks to grant relief on penalties and interest on any tax liability disclosed in respect to the period of five years running from 1st July 2015 to 30th June 2020. You also have to understand that Revenue Authority does not have the manpower and um, the capability of auditing all 4 million or so uh, of the taxpayers. Taxpayers who take advantage of the program will receive full or partial waiver of the penalties and interest depending on the time of payment of disclosed taxes. Persons who make full payment of disclosed taxes in 2021 will get 100% relief in penalties and interest, while those who pay in 2022 and 2023 shall get relief at a rate of 50% and 25% respectively. Besides widening the tax base, KRA also hopes to leverage on the data gathered. You possibly even get um, to know who is not complying by virtue of the cross-referencing of the data from these people who have now self-declared. And you grow that tax, uh, tax base, which is a real big issue around uh, mobilizing resources in this country. Detailed guidelines of the program are on KRA's website. KRA is targeting to collect 1.7 trillion shillings this year. Alex Mwangi and TV. Now, limited liability companies are on a race to comply with the January 31st deadline for registration of beneficial owners with the Registrar of Companies. Legal experts now say that whereas this presents a benefit as far as scrutiny of companies is concerned, there are a number of grey areas which need tightening. Effective 31st of January 2021, all limited liability companies will be required to maintain a register of beneficial owners and file the same with the Registrar of Companies. This is in line with the October 2020 announcement by the Registrar of Companies which was made through a public notice following recommendation from the Financial Action Task Force on International Standards on Combating Money Laundering and the Financing of Terrorism. What exactly does this mean for companies? Well, in terms of implication, it means that um, 
look at your shareholders as the first place. Try and see who owns more than 10%. It could be a company. Try to find out who the ultimate beneficial owner is who owns more than 10% in the company. Identify anyone who has significant influence over the company in terms of voting rights, in terms of appointment of uh, board members. So identify these people, get information about them. And what happens then should the deadline pass and a limited liability company is not compliant with the provision? For the company itself, they're talking about um, 500,000 Kenya shillings penalty for the company and its officers meaning even its directors could face this particular fine on conviction. And another 50,000 Kenya shillings for every continuing default per day. And then for an individual person, you may wonder, okay, what does it have to do for me? Well, I look at it from a transactions perspective. So if you don't comply, then the company's registry officers at the registry have powers to kind of stop a transaction where the company in which the shares or some transaction is happening has not disclosed who the beneficial owners are. There is, however, grave concern as to what this means for privacy should the information of companies be leaked from the registry. I saw a penalty of 20,000 shillings for someone who discloses this information to the public. For example, an officer, is that 20,000 shillings sufficient uh, compared to you know, the kind of information that is being disclosed and what someone could do with it. The Companies Act defines a beneficial owner as, and I quote, the natural person who ultimately owns and controls a legal person or on whose behalf transactions are conducted. Elsewhere, Mata Pato Ward landowners in Kajiado Central Sub County have joined hands to stop a 2.6 billion shilling power line project by the Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Ketraco. The residents claim they've not received the 30% compensation for their land as agreed, which Ketraco had offered in line with the National Land Commission. It's a cry for justice. Literally. They're upset that their land was taken away without their consent. Ketrako workers were forced to stop working as the landowners stormed the grounds. Despite intense lobbying by local leaders pushing for 35% compensation, they are yet to reach an agreement. They claim the parcels of land were undervalued. Some of the landowners have now moved to court to petition Ketraco to review the compensation rates before proceeding with the project. The locals are set to benefit from 3 million shillings in the form of corporate social responsibility from Ketraco. Several villages are also expected to benefit from electricity supply and the economy of the area will get a boost. Helen Aura, NTV. And that's your business news. Stay with us as we take a quick break. We'll be bringing you news from Uganda ahead of the upcoming elections. That's when she replied, give me one good reason to stay with you. Ni a hundred reasons to be my boo. Akanisho unabonga sana kwa text lakini in real life when I'm timid. Apo wapo nika get minutes ya paint picture vivi. Akasema ati I'm in demand. Unadani DM yangu ni MP. Kumbe nilikuwa nisha sotiwa na a hundred MP. SMS and browse from only 10 shillings with Telcom. Now that's power. Telcom, moving with you. Breaking news from Mo.
Perfects. Let's see what they are developing right now. Morphix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morphix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. Get fresh, gotta get fresh. Down is a wolf, wolf, powder, a wolf, wolf, powder. Smells by an outch, a fool's in a zip, in a impure down. Protect the goals, I'm gonna do key, and it goes up. Lazy money, we're fresh, not down. It's wolf, 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 powder. It's the wolf, wolf, powder. Smells of ten, as it wolf, wolf, powder. Full freshness, down is wolf, wolf, wolf. Nanny 15, Bob, too? Welcome back. Facebook has shut down a number of accounts belonging to Ugandan government officials accused of seeking to manipulate public debate ahead of the elections as the two main competitors, Robert Chalungani and President Yoweri Museveni, continued campaigning. Chagulani has vowed to use his music to reach out to the voters in the remaining days of campaigns. The result follows the Electoral Commission's decision to block his campaigns in 16 districts for failing to sign a memorandum of understanding with them. He announced his move today as he attended Sunday service at St. Nicholas Orthodox Church, Namunguna. With only four days to voting day, the National Unity Platform presidential candidate is exploring every opportunity to reach out to the voters. After the Electoral Commission blocked his campaigns in 16 districts for failure to sign a memorandum of understanding, Robert Chagulanyi has been a regular figure at different prayer centers. Today, he attended Sunday service at St. Nicholas Orthodox Church in Namungona, near Kampala. The prayers were led by Bishop Sylvester Chisitu, who called for the restraining of security forces during electoral campaigns. Later, he also blessed the presidential candidate. Muri ano mukulembeze guanga na iwa wa yobera agamba tu wajabi ukulonda kujaba kuwa mirembe iraba mukuli nisa neto si gara tutia kuwa mukuli da atenti. Following the service, as he was joined by scores of worshippers, Chagulanyi vowed to reach out to voters in every mode possible. Like I said from the beginning, I will reach the people of Uganda in every style, in a Robert Dobb style. As a musician, Chagulanyi says he has already released the song to pass on his message to the voters. Many comrades are dead, Nubi and many others in jail. Yo, Katimunangari, you, Okumala, Obi, Nodi, Nakulona. That explains why I decided to employ, to deploy my musical talents uh, to go to studio and release a song. But that is not all. Um, I'm in church now and I've been able to communicate to people and I will continue to communicate to the people of Uganda in every possible way. With two days of campaigning left for the presidential candidate, he declined to reveal his next step before campaigns close on Tuesday evening. I will not let you know my plans for the next two days because the regime is out to frustrate every plan for me to reach out to the people. But all I can confirm to you is that I will reach to all the people of Uganda, especially the voters, in every style possible. The stage is set for polling day, as polling materials are already being distributed to different polling stations. Ali Mivole, NTV. <laughs> And back home, a Mavoko court has ordered the detainment of Christian Mwambe Kadima, the lead suspect in the death of lawyer Caroline Koki, for 14 more days to allow authorities to conduct investigations pertaining the suspect's identity. The prosecution says Kadima was arrested with a Safaricom line registered under a South African name. His temporary Kenyan pass is registered under the name Eric Kambugi Katali Kadima. 
It is reported that the suspect is wanted in South Africa, where he goes by the name Yuloj Christian Kadima and was arrested after allegedly assaulting a woman. Kadima skipped a bail in South Africa and managed to flee to Kenya. The suspect will be held in remand at the Mulalongo police station, awaiting mention on the 25th of January. The prosecution highlighted an, uh, a few issues as to the reasons for the application. Uh, one of them was the identity of the suspect. Uh, he's still a suspect because he has not taken plea. And uh, uh, they said that uh, he bears several names as is appearing in uh, uh, several documents that they have. Uh, they gave an example that uh, uh, the suspect uh, had registered in Kenya uh, and safari com number 0742-640-835 uh, using a South African passport. A man from Osel in Baringo County has been arraigned in Cabarnet for impersonating a DCI officer and defrauding a senior government official for operating an unlicensed clinic in Baringo North. The suspect, Alexander Kibet, alias Dr. Donald, presented himself as an inspector of police attached to the DCI headquarters. Kibet was arrested in Marigat town where he had uh, arranged to receive 300,000 shillings from the victim, claiming to pay off FIDA. The court has granted the DCI officers seven more days to complete the investigation. The anti-corruption court has referred an application made by Tharakanithi County Governor Mudomin Juki uh, seeking to challenge the acts he's been charged under. The anti-corruption court said it has no jurisdiction to determine the application. The case has now been referred to the High Court for interpretation as to whether he and 20 other accused persons were rightfully charged under the Anti-Corruption Act. The decision arose from an application by defence lawyers to effect that their clients were not aware under which act of the law they had been charged with. The charge sheet indicates the accused are charged under the Penal Code and Anti-Corruption Act. The court has also refused an application seeking to refer the case to Thar uh, Tharakanithi as sought by the lawyers. Juki and his co-accused were charged with conspiracy to defraud the county government of 34 million shillings through an unprocedural tendering process. And from those stories, we'll shift focus in a moment to the sports news. I'll be back with that. Vegetable oil stays liquid to the last drop so it's smooth cooking from start to finish. Now with an easy to pour cap. Mapishi pour, madishi pour. It was one of the most significant takeovers in Kenya's banking history. 15 months after the buyout, is National Bank on sound capital footing? Has the COVID-19 pandemic derailed the bank's aggressive recovery of bad debt? How does the bank see risk pricing evolving in the present state of the market? In the next edition of Business Redefined, we host the Managing Director of the National Bank of Kenya. I want you to tell Matthias that he should marry my Roberta. And how can I tell him that? Well, I think Renata is a very nice woman. I'm not jealous. You're jealous of Agustin. Who did I marry? It's you, Heronimo. Our society is very cruel about these kinds of things. And I don't want my daughter to be the talk of the and town. And I don't care about what society thinks. That does not matter to me. But it matters to me. Relax, relax. I know right. you're here. Come it's on. Over. Nina. That's right, she's here and she's going to stay Lazarus, here! Please, calm down! Timeless Love Select a plot of value-added land within Garden of Joy Gated Community 
of Koma Kennel Road, Machakos. Na ukwamue January na 21K with Optiven. Call us now on 0790-300-300. Sports News Now, Cabinet Secretary for Sports, Culture and Heritage, Ambassador Amina Mohammed, along with the Cabinet Secretary of Environment and Forestry, Keriako Tobiko, signed a collaboration work frame for the construction of the Jamhuri Sports Complex along Ngong Road. They later inspected the ongoing construction, which will be completed by March this year. In honor of today's signature of this uh, framework of collaboration, the Ministry will adopt the blocks of Ngong Forest that are around uh, this uh, sports uh, complex. And I'm greatly, greatly uh, honoured and privileged that uh, CLC Kiriako Tobiko accepted our request to sponsor this, uh, this uh, forest and to partner with him to ensure that uh, uh, we conserve what needs uh, conservation, we improve what needs improvement, and that we turned this into an amazing uh, green space um, uh, with a model green uh, complex, sports complex. So Asante Sana Mushino for all the support. I'm really happy that today we've been able to complete this work. Elsewhere, Magongo Rangers are the winners of the Mohammed Hatmi Memorial Tournament. Magongo Rangers were crowned the winners after defeating rivals Omax FC 4-1 in penalties. The competitive match held at the Serani grounds in Mombasa saw both teams scoring one goal during the normal time. The tournament was organized to honor former FKF chairman and Mombasa-nominated MCA, the late Mohamed Hatimi. The winners walked away with a trophy and a cash prize of 115,000 shillings, with the second position Omax FC pocketing 90,000 shillings. The tournament attracted a total of 52 teams from Mombasa County. Abe Gasho and Sige Gebre Salama won the men's and women's elite races respectively at the Great Ethiopian Run on Sunday. Gasho won the 10-kilometer race in a time of 28 minutes and 19 seconds, one second ahead of his training partner Tadese Woku. This was his second victory after his 2016 win. Uh, Gebre Salama won the women's race in a time of 32 minutes and 32 seconds. Her victory comes after she narrowly missed out on first place two years ago due to a misdirection in the race's final 200 metres. The 10-kilometre race was postponed last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Carlos Vinicius scored a first half hat trick as Tottenham humiliated non league Marine. 5-0 at Rosset Park to book their place in the FA Cup fourth round. Vinicius scored his hat-trick inside 13 minutes. Other Spurs goals was scored by his fellow Brazilian Lucas Moura before the break and a first senior goal by 16-year-old substitute Alfie Davina in the second half completed the win. Meanwhile, Brighton goalkeeper Jason Steele was the hero with four penalty saves as they beat Newport 4-3 in an FA Cup third round shootout at Rodney Parade after one all uh, draw inside 120 minutes. Still saved from Josh Sheehan, Mickey Dimitriou, Liam Shepard and Scott Bennett as Brighton won a 14 penalty shootout. Tonight, Stockport County host West Ham United at Edgley Park. Don't go 
Defending champions Juventus beat Sassuolo 3-1 at Juventus Stadium last night to remain in touch in the Serie A title race. Danilo put Juve ahead in the 50th minute after shooting from 25 yards before Gregory Dreffel levelled for Sassuolo in the 58th minute. Aaron Ramsey scored the second goal for Juventus in the 82nd minute. Cristiano Ronaldo struck the third goal in injury time. Sassuolo played the second half with 10 men after Pedro Obiang was sent off for a bad challenge on Federico Chesa. This was a third successive victory for Juve, who climbed to fourth, seven points behind leaders AC Milan. Desperate to get on the score sheet, Maratta available in the middle. It is Cristiano Ronaldo! And that mini goal drought didn't last for long. It's cruel on Sassuolo, but Juve make absolutely sure. Juve having huffed and puffed a bit here, having led, it finishes in Turin. Juventus 3, Sassuolo. In Spanish, La Liga Valencia beat Real Valladolid 1-0 at Jose Sorizia Stadium. Uh, Carlos Sole Bargan scored the only goal for Valencia in the 76th minute. Meanwhile, Cadiz registered a 3-1 win over Alaves as uh, Levante beat Eibar 2-1. Elche is taking on Getafe while well, SD Huesca welcome Real Betis tonight. Leaders Atletico Madrid will host Sevilla at Wanda Metropolitano on Tuesday night. Stood from the penalty spot, Hossi Lu scoring after Fali had been adjudged Alaves to reduce to 10 men. And immediately the home side take full advantage of that. It's Anthony Lothano's slide. But it was to be Cadiz this afternoon. Lothano setting up Negredo here, making space for himself and finishing brilliantly past Pacheco, showing all of his class. Carantha, final score, Cadiz 3, Alaves 1. And that is your sports news. And it closes NTV tonight. As always, thanks ever so much for your company. David Agondoa has been our sign language interpreter. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. I'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, have a good night. Chenkai kunyimpini half inja Na kila mmoja anarizikia yake Mimi vile na hustle hivi hii ndio jasho langu Kila Jumanne katika NTV jioni tutapata makala maalum ya jasho langu kuangazia raha na karaha heri na shari za watu katika kazi na vibarua mbalimbali Mimi Max Riala na kuunda glass Ndilo jasho langu. Na hii ndio jasho langu. Haito the African Dogman. Na hii ndio haso langu. Nami ni Daniel Mule. Na hili ndilo jasho langu. We are Nation. Africa's independent media brand. We are committed to empowering all Africans. From the young to the old. From the curious to the educated and from the heart of the cities to the rural areas we are nation join us because if you want to get far you do it together nation empower africa I want you to tell Matthias that he should marry my Roberta. And how can I tell him that? Well, I think Renata is a very nice woman. I'm not jealous. You're jealous of Agustin. Who did I marry? It's you, Henry.
anymore. Our society is very cruel about these kinds of things. And I don't want my daughter to be the talk of the and town. And I don't care about what society thinks. That does not matter to me. But it matters to me. Relax, relax. I know you're right. here. Come on. That's right, she's here, and she's going to stay Lazarus, here! Please, calm down! Timeless Love Select a plot of value-added land within Garden of Joy Gated Community of Koma Kennel Road, Machakos. Now Kwamue January na 21K with Optiven. Call us now on 0790-300-300. I'm waking you up to the hottest morning show. Tina Kagia, The Morning Fix, Nation FM.